to introduce their bodies and to their work and to understand the reality of exploitation and trafficking, we will be taking you on a journey tonight. But I want to warn you in advance, there will not be a pleasant journey. We will be traveling along a path of bordering by pain and darkness. But of course, throughout this journey, our awardees will serve as beacons of light to show us that there are ways to help these children. And there are ways to break the vicious circles of exploitation. On the map behind me, you can see the most common migrant routes. But of course, it's not all of the migrants' routes, because if we put them up here, we won't even see the map. For many children on the run, the countries on the map here is where the journey starts. For others, the journey has started much, much earlier. And countries behind them will be the transit countries and they need, that they need to pass through on their way to Europe. Many of these children who are transiting through these countries have already traveled a long way at the mercy of traffickers. They may have been packed up into a pickup truck or driving through the extreme heat in the desert or maybe risk their life on the top, on the roof, on a train. The stories from people travel this way are filled with testimonials of rape, beating, fear, thefts, extortion, and lack of food and water. If you travel alone, if you lack education, and if you undertake a longer journey, you are also statistically even more vulnerable. And the most vulnerable in transit countries are those who come from sub-Saharan Africa. Reports indicate as many as two-thirds of adolescent refugees from sub-Saharan suffer exploitation on the way to Europe. A rate over four times higher than refugee children and youth from other regions. Also in detention camps, People from different African countries are treated far worse and often exposed to racist abuse and discrimination. So this is the reality which a number of our Child 10 awardees operate in a dark, sometimes hopeless situation that they really need to represent the light and the hope. So it is now my great honor to introduce the first Child 10 awardees of the evening. Please. Thousands of children live in dangerous situations in countries where they have sought protection, desperately in need of finding a safe place. Since 2005, Refuge Point has directly assisted more than 50,000 refugees to access resettlement programs and completed referrals for almost 2,000 children at risk. Martin Anderson has dedicated his career to improving the lives of refugees. As director of international programs at Refuge Point, Martin and his organization working closely with UNHCR and others, have developed child protection and resettlement programs in many countries across Africa and the Middle East. These programs seek to ensure that refugee children have access to the support programs and lasting solutions they need. Please welcome the Director of International Programs at Refuge Point, Martin Anderson. Welcome up here, Martin. So, I mean, in the video, you have 
uh, you said that you have supported thousands of vulnerable children in this region with resettle resettlement programs. Can you tell a little bit about what does that mean and what is a resettlement program? Oh, that would be good, I suppose. Welcome. Can you hear me? So, Sarah, I think the first thing that I have to do is to express um, my very sincere disappointment that my last name, in fact, has only one S in it. <laughs> and though I appreciate the fact that you've made me a little more Swedish for the evening, I am, in fact, uh, <laughs> American, as you, as you can hear. Uh, but I do appreciate the, the temporary upgrade. Thank you. <laughs> and then I also wanted to say, um, of course, thank you to you, Sarah, to everyone at Child 10, to all of the other awardees, and then while I'm at it, to my wife Natalie and my son Desmond, who are here with us as well. It's a real honor and, and opportunity to be here. So thank you to everyone. And to all of you, too, I should have said, most importantly. Thank you all. Now, to answer your question about resettlement. Yes. In, in principle, it's quite simple and straightforward, though in practice it can often be very complicated. In principle, resettlement is simply the idea of identifying those refugees who cannot survive where they're currently living and then, uh, and for whatever reason that might, might be, and that includes many, many thousands of unaccompanied children, separated children, other children at risk, identifying them, those children at need, wherever they happen to be living, and linking them with the opportunities to relocate permanently to a safe new home. That's often in Europe and North America, Australia and New Zealand, but other places too identifying people who need that opportunity and making it happen. That's, that's what we do and that's what resettlement is. And then I think you asked, pardon me, go ahead. Mm. No, but can you tell us a little bit mo like more concrete, how is the process? I mean, what do you do? So we at Refuge Point have staff working in refugee camps and urban environments around Africa and the Middle East. Mm. And they are actively working with UNHCR and other partners and it's very important to stress the contributions of local partners in all of these places working with those partners to identify the children who are otherwise on that migration route that we've just seen on the map, working their way towards Europe in such dangerous circumstances, working to identify them before they expose themselves to all of those dangers and make those links, like I said, to resettlement and other migration opportunities that they are eligible for and that they need so desperately. Yeah. So, I mean, from from your point of view, I mean, we are talking a lot, and we have been talking a lot about that during these days. I mean, since like 2016, the media attention around this whole uh, problem is much, much lower. Um, and what, I mean, what would you say about the situation right now when it comes to trafficking? How has it changed the last, just the last few years? Yeah, I feel like I need to start by admitting that I am, I am absolutely not an expert on global trafficking or anti-trafficking. And so let me focus here, please, on one aspect of this that um, I've experienced in my own work and yeah. that therefore I know comfortably. We've been working with UNHCR and other partners over the past couple of years to identify refugee children in detention in Libya Mm -hmm. and to evacuate them from Libya to other countries in Africa where they can then live safely while their resettlement uh, applications are processed for, for resettlement to a safe new home. It is a critical program. It is very literally a life-saving program for many uh, hundreds and now thousands of children. However, what we've recently seen is that some children a small number, but some children are now starting to actively seek detention in Libya in order to access the resettlement opportunity on the other side of detention in Libya. And I, I mention that not in any way to undermine your faith in that program. Like I said, it is a critical program. It is a life-saving program. Mm -hmm. I mention that simply to stress that it is, it's complicated and our interventions are complicated. And we have to be careful about how we intervene and the unintended consequences of our interventions. Mm -hmm. And so at Refuge Point, we're working not just on resettlement, but also on self-reliance opportunities for refugees in the countries where they currently are 
so that hopefully don't, they don't feel so compelled to undertake those desperate journeys across the Sahara to the Mediterranean and onwards towards, towards Europe. I think when you hear, I mean, when we hear about the situation and all the stories that, I mean, we will be told and has been told during this up this evening, um, you feel so. I mean, you really want to help. What, what can we do? I mean, people are here from corporates, from authorities, from organisations and and human rights fighters. I mean, mixed group of people. What kind of advice? I mean, yeah. Well. I think first and foremost, it's quite obvious that everyone here has taken uh, a big and important, at least first step by being here tonight, by supporting Child 10 and the, the wonderful work that you do. Um, I think it would be remiss of me, or at least a missed opportunity, not to highlight the fact that we have 10 awardee organizations here, all of which would appreciate whatever support you're able to offer. Yeah. But then I think too, um, you know, at this moment in time, like you and Jacob described earlier, it's important to stress the principle behind the expression of thinking globally but acting locally. So much of uh, the work that we all do on the ground uh, all over the world, frankly, mm. is very heavily influenced by domestic politics in Europe and in each individual European country. And so anything that you can do to influence your local politics, even right here in Malmo, even right here in mm. Sweden, uh, that has real impact, real consequences, and it does help us uh, when you can make the case and make the point that we do need to protect these, these children at risk. Mm. Thank you very much.